Welcome to this course on Inspire for Foaming. In this course, I will be introducing the foaming process as well as the Inspire Polyfoam. There will be a series of lectures, and today I will cover the foaming introduction. And in the next lectures, I will talk about how to get started with Inspire Polyfoam, how to create and modify geometry, how to set up your model, and perform the foaming analysis. Here is a quick overview of the agenda for this session. Firstly, we will go through the introduction to foaming process, then we will see a few details about the polyurethane market. After that, we will talk about the background and the different applications of foam. And we will also look at the foaming classifications and systems. Then we will see different foaming processes, and understand what is polyurethane foam, how to make PU foam, and what is the typical reaction kinetics involved here. Thereafter, we will also touch on topics such as the chemical blowing reaction and the physical blowing reaction, the raw materials needed for PU foam, and then understanding the calculation for the formulation and the terminology. Then we will understand the polyurethane reaction mechanism, the different types of PU foam, the foam material database, how to generate the database, what are the typical foam defects which generally occur, and how to analyze the results. This document is a guide for designers or engineers who are not familiar with foaming process. The document will help you understand some of the basic information so that you can start working with the software. It will also help you to understand the potential manufacturing problems that occur while designing products. Inspire Polyfoam is an extremely easy-to-use tool that can help you in detecting and preventing defects related to your problems in your design process. There are many types of foams, and polyurethane is one of the most popular foaming materials. It is widely used in industries such as the automotive industry, coating industry, shoe industry, beds, and furniture industries as well as insulation products. This video gives a very nice introduction to the development of polyurethane foam. Polyol and isocyanide are the two main compositions of PU foam, and some of the additives are also used for enhancing the property of foam. To develop the polyurethane foam, we take polyol and isocyanide and mix them with the stirring process. After mixing it properly with a stirrer, we leave it for a few seconds to allow the chemical reaction to begin. And now you can see here the foam is being created. This is how you develop a foam. Now imagine that you are trying to create foam, which is the case of insulation on the roof here. And while developing the foaming, you always want to keep the risk involved in the foaming process to be under control. But here, the process was not managed properly. So you can see in this video that the foaming reaction was too fast and somehow went out of control. The video shows you the importance of controlling the reaction kinetics. Now let us understand the typical market of PU foam. Here you can see that the global market in 2018 was around 65.6 billion, which is steadily growing. And from the statistics of GrandViewResearch.com, it is expected to grow to around 105.2 billion by 2025. There are different kind of polyurethane foams and the market mostly demand lightweight and durable products. Especially in the automotive, construction, and electronic industries, the demand of PU foam is high. Because of its versatility and unique physical properties, it can be used for a variety of applications. To name a few types, we have rigid and flexible foam, coatings, adhesives, sealants, elastomers, etc. We will see in the coming slides that how the applications are different for different types of foams. Normally polyurethane foam or polyfoam can be obtained through different types of reaction processes. And the properties of the foam depend upon the type of process used for its manufacturing. For manufacturing the foam, there are some basic steps that we need to follow. In the basic process, two different materials are combined to foam a foaming solution. These materials are polyol or isocyanides, where isocyanide acts as a joining mediator. 
it can also consist of other components like surfactants, fillers, additives, etc. Different types of foaming products can be generated by changing different concentrations of these materials. If you look at the image on the right side, it shows you the different kinds of reaction mechanism that occurs during the polyfoam process. Now let us understand the different kinds of applications that polyurethane can be used. The various applications of PU foam are in the domain of automotive, furniture, healthcare, and consumer goods. In the automotive and transport sector, PU foams are generally used as vehicle seats, headrests, and noise insulation. The next major application of polyfoam is at home, as furniture, where it is used for daily routine products such as bedding, cushions, seating, and floor insulation. And then consumer goods are another major application, where polyfoam is used in appliances like washing machines, refrigerators, shoes, clothes, cosmetic products, wall paintings, etc. In healthcare sector, polyfoam could be used in the prosthetic components, wound relief products, extra soft materials, mattresses for hospitals and dressing materials. Polyurethane foam can also be used for a variety of commercial products such as packaging, transportation of agile products, filtration process in the manufacturing industry, sports, and leisure. For example, PU foam can be used in the rugby ball, inside cushioning for the helmet, and many other similar recreational activities. Polyfoams are also used in movie theaters, where foam-coated walls are used to ensure noise isolation inside the theaters. Polyfoam can mainly be divided into two categories. One is the flexible foam and another is the rigid foam. Further, they can also be classified based on the application they are used. And foam systems can be classified into three different categories. These are one-step one-shock system, quasi-prepolymer system, and full prepolymer system. Then let us look into some of the subcategories. Flexible foams can be subcategorized into soft flexible molded foams, semi-flexible and slapstock foams. Rigid foams can be subcategorized into laminated board stock, rigid insulated, and on-site foams. And when we look at the systems for one-step one-shot system, here the polyol and isocyanide are taken as two different components, and by mixing them foam product can be obtained. In the quasi-pre system, polyol and isocyanide are combined as solution 1, while in solution 2, other catalysts and additive agents are taken together with polyol. Polyfoam is made after mixing both solutions. In the full pre-system, polyol and isocyanide are combined as solution 1, while in solution 2, other catalysts and additive agents are taken without adding polyol. So you saw that in the quasi-pre-system, it was taken with polyol, and here in the full pre-system, it is without adding polyol. And polyfoam is made by mixing both solutions. This slide shows you the typical foaming processes that are available to us. Foaming can be subcategorized into machine foaming, box foaming, and cup foaming. Machine foaming can be large box foaming, slab stock foaming, pour in place foaming, sandwich foaming and molding, as well as spraying and frothing. There are some other processes also which are used. So let us go into the details of these processes and understand more about them. The first is the cup foaming. Cup foaming is used for the purpose of lab-scale foam creation. Creating small-size foam products by mixing solutions in a cup is known as cup foaming. In box foaming, foam is created from the box and is larger in size compared to cup foaming. So these are usually used for manufacturing big mattresses and similar products. In the box foaming process, both solutions are mixed together and poured into the box, which will get cured at ambient temperature resulting in the final product. In machine foaming, there are two subcategories for the types of foam used and how they are made. They are large box foaming and slab stock foaming. In the large box foaming process, foam blocks are larger in size as well as they are manufactured in a discontinuous manner. 
by means of machines, like a mixer to mix solutions and an injector to fill the large cavity, the foam is made by curing at room temperature. In slab stock foaming, foam is made on a large moving conveyor, and after the curing process is complete, the specific size of the block will get cut off to make a separate segment. Then there are several other kinds of foaming processes, such as pour-in-place foaming, which is especially used to fill the internal gaps and voids. For the sandwich foaming and molding, it is recommended to use when you would like to have multi-layer foam, one above the other. And spraying and frothing are mainly used to reach and fill void areas which are flat or non-flat, such as the roof, an integral part of the walls, and cylindrical objects so it is mainly cured while coming in contact with open air and at room temperature. Now moving to the next topic, that is, what is polyurethane foam? For example, you are sitting on a chair right now and you have a cushion, which is most likely made from polyurethane foam. Other examples could be the pillows that you use to sleep and the cushions and the couch. So all these are the examples of polyurethane that you are using in day-to-day -day life. Polyurethane is a leading member of a wide range and highly diverse family of polymers or plastics. It can be solid, it can be an open cellular structure, it can be flexible or rigid. Polyurethane foam is manufactured by reacting polyols and polyisocyanates, both are derivatives of crude oil. Then you have a variety of additives that are added to the mixture to produce high-quality PU foams. Of course, the inclusion of additives will depend upon the application you need to use the foam. To get the desired quality of foam, you perform a number of experiments with varying constituents. You can substitute the experiment with simulations to conduct different trials and check if the quality of the produced foam is good enough. Or you have to analyze the molding process to improve the production rate, and such kinds of things that are necessary to improve the quality of the products which we are using in day-to-day -day life. Now let us have a look at how to make polyurethane foam. So the production of polyurethane foam requires two main components, that is, the polyol and polyisocyanide. Along with these two, we also need a blowing agent. The blowing agent is usually added to the polyol together with further auxiliary components, such as activators, which are usually the reaction accelerators, foam stabilizers, or foam retardants. On the right side, it shows you an example of how the polyurethane foam is made. And this is a very famous method which is known as the breaker or the cup test. As the video plays, here you can see that the A component is mixed with the B component by stirring. Due to the mixing of these two components, an exothermic reaction takes place. And as a result, you can see the rising of the front. And finally, you get the polyurethane foam. The reaction that takes place when the polyol and polyisocyanide are mixed results in macromolecules with urethane structures, which are known as polyurethanes. And during this reaction, a considerable amount of heat is released which is partly used to evaporate readily volatile liquids. As a result, the liquid or reaction mixture is expanded to form a foam. Various quantities of water are also added to the polyol. This was the beaker test example which shows how PU foam is formed. These are the typical reactions that we have discussed. Here you can see that isocyanide reacts with polyol and releases a lot of energy. If you look at the reaction, it follows a typical arena's path that is what the reaction says. And if the functionality of the polyol is greater than 2, in the above reaction, then the 3D polyurethane network is formed and the reaction is called the gelling reaction. The polyurethane reaction for the system considered an Inspire polyfoam follows the second order kinetics. Now let us look at what is the chemical reaction. The reaction of isocyanide with water leads to the formation of carbon dioxide, urea, and the generation of heat. The water reacts with the polyisocyanide to form polyurea and carbon dioxide, which serves as a co-blowing agent but can also be the sole blowing agent. 
and the carbon dioxide formed in this reaction is known as the chemical blowing reaction. To distinguish between the physical blowing reaction and get a proper balance between the urea and urethane reactions was necessary to get a stable polyurethane foam structure. This reaction is complex because of the possibility of several reaction mechanisms. And in order to model such a process, we consider some assumptions to simplify the foaming process. We also consider the kinetics to follow the second order rate equation. In the case of the physical blowing agent, it begins to evaporate when the temperature rises above the boiling point because it changes into a gaseous phase through physical evaporation. This is known as a physical blowing reaction. The mold temperature control is very important here because the reaction does not occur until the temperature for the evaporation is not reached. This is the key point here. And also if the mold temperature is too high, an explosion reaction can occur, similar to what we saw in the rooftop experiment video, earlier in this session. Therefore, an agent that evaporates at low temperatures is sometimes used, and we consider the kinetics to follow the first-order reaction.